the role of the user's internet service provider is to accept traffic on the user's behalf at an internet exchange point, mm -hmm. carry it to the user, and then carry the reply back from the user to another internet exchange point, or maybe the same one. Um, and the same role was mirrored on the other side. There's no increased value uh, you know, to one side or the other, right? Mm -hmm. Each of these is completely an independent transaction between the internet service provider and their customer. Mm -hmm. um, so how well or poorly this happens is a matter of the efficiency of that network service provider. So if you hear someone complain, well, we've put a lot of money into this and our profits are too low, what that's saying is that they're operating inefficiently. And if their profits are too low, they need to charge their customer more money or they need to spend less money on their operations. They need to, you know, operate more efficiently through laying in higher bandwidth circuits, for instance, which would carry more bandwidth for the same, you know, underlying cost, um, which requires upgrading more frequently and so forth. It's, it's work. Uh, but that's the work that, in theory, the customer is paying the provider to do, to keep modernizing their networks so that there will always be enough bandwidth and so that the user can buy more bandwidth when they want to. At the same time, exactly the same transaction is happening on the other side of, of the exchange point between the content provider and their internet service provider, which is moving the content to an exchange point where it can be handed off. Now, a difference between content and users are that users pick their own location, whereas content can be replicated to many places. That's an efficiency on the content side. That's great. Um, but it has nothing to do with the user. These are two separate transactions that are independent of each other 